Hello, I'm Christian Ramos, Inquirer.net reporter, and you're watching Inside Look. Today, we have Philippine Ambassador to India, Mr. Ramon Bagatsin Jr., to give us updates on how Filipinos there are coping up with the surge of COVID-19 cases in the South Asian country. Sir, thank you for joining us. Welcome to Inside Look. Po. How are you? Po? Uh, magandang araw dyan. Uh, salamat sa pagkataon na ito. Uh, under the circumstances, we're all well. We have to cope with the realities on the ground here. To start off, sir, how is the situation over there? Well, we know in reports there are, you know, heartbreaking images of COVID-19 patients in um, overcrowding hospitals as well yung mga mass cremations. Pero um, can you give us an overview of the situation there right now? Well, it's really dire and uh, sad uh, when you see all this uh, uh, news coming out, the very graphic details of uh, what's happening. Uh, and... Uh, uh, I, 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 it's hard to describe these things because uh, it, it is heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. When you have cases uh, of about 370,000 a day, mm -hmm. 1 million cases in 3 days, mm -hmm. an average of about 3,500 deaths a day. Mm -hmm. So, so far, they, there have been 18.5 million uh, positive cases and over 205,000 uh, deaths. No? Uh, so uh, it, it is really sad and uh, deplorable, but uh, we have to live with it and we have to cope with, with uh, what we have and do the best that we can, mm -hmm. primarily for our uh, uh, kababayans. Mm -hmm. uh, so because of that, we have uh, set up a... Uh, first and foremost is that we, we need to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. So in our Facebook, we, we have given to them the our email address, our numbers, and a chat group uh, so that there is direct communication with our kababayans uh, here. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, with the help of the Filipino community, we have a, a COVID support group. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, hopefully uh, this will uh, establish lines of communication, at least give them words of comfort and assurance that to the best of our ability, uh, we will help them. No? Mm -hmm. And fortunately, <clears throat> fortunately, the DFA with Secretary Luxin has been all out in giving uh, their support uh, in whatever form, ways, or means mm -hmm. uh, that we can uh, be of service to our fellow media. So if you put it in its historical perspective, mm -hmm. last year at the outbreak of COVID, I think uh, January, February from China, mm -hmm. uh, then you, you, you uh, review how it hit Europe, more specifically Italy, uh, you had pictures of uh, hospitals uh, being uh, overcrowded, people waiting outside the hospitals and uh, dead bodies being uh, brought out in stretchers mm -hmm. and funeral parlors and churches also being full. Mm -hmm. That was last year. Mm -hmm. The only, I would say, more graphic and dramatic pictures that you see here in India is because that them, them being Hindus, most of them, uh, they, they practice cremation. Mm -hmm. So it's more dramatic and more graphic when you see, you know, funeral mm -hmm. fires and burning bodies and things like that, you know, uh, that's the sad part. But even in the United States, so at that time, India was maybe, what, having 10,000 cases a day. America was having 50,000 cases a day. Mm -hmm. Now the tides have turned against uh, India mm -hmm. because of uh, what I said earlier about the uh, double mutant strain. Mm -hmm. so this is more lethal, more deadly, more brutal, uh, and more wicked, and uh, that is what is happening. So. I, I think it's more of a the biological factor that we have this uh, sudden surge, this tsunami of cases and un unfortunate uh, deaths happening right now here in India. Uh, but uh, in a sense, the, uh, the government is coping quite well and they're adjusting with the help of the, you know, uh, with you, the help of humanity of other countries. They're bringing in oxygens, mm -hmm. other equipment that are necessary for the. Uh, for the treatment of those that are sick, mm -hmm. uh, medicines, uh, remdesivir, and uh, uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients for them to to make uh, the medicines and the vaccines. So there, there has been a worldwide support, mm -hmm. and which is very good because the Indians are a very very resilient people, uh, and they manage well and they cope up well. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, now because of these incidents, uh, the national government and here in Delhi, the local government mm -hmm. have announced lockdowns. Mm -hmm. So we hope that, that the people will go back to the old behavioral factors of practicing the COVID protocols of face mask, face shield, 
social distancing, and hand sanitizers, etc. So, medyo natauan sila ngayon, nabigla sila. So, they go back to the old routine, which really helped a lot uh, last year. And it should be continuing all throughout uh, uh, this year anyway, you know, while we still have this pandemic. So, the, 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 the government is uh, doing its best to, to manage. And the private sector have been helping. They have, before when we had an outbreak, so a lot of uh, areas were converted into hospitals. Mm. You're mentioning po about dun sa private sector po, yung kung ano po yung contribution nila dun sa pandemic dyan sa India po. Uh, okay. Well, the uh, a lot of NGOs and uh, corporations, uh, private sector groups here, have been helping out no? uh, by providing facilities for them to put up uh, temporary hospital beds. Mm -hmm. Providing the medical equipments, uh, oxygens, uh, and uh, uh, other medical kits required, mm -hmm. uh, even food. So, malaking, malaking bagay yan, and uh, they've been doing that. And now, because of the alarming situation as, uh, as being shown by international media, so other countries have also come in and provided the uh, support. So, uh, the Bayanian spirit is not just confined to the Philippines, but other countries as well. Sir, among Filipinos there po, as of April 29, how many COVID cases have we recorded? Yung deaths, uh, recoveries, um, active cases, sir? Well, uh, last year was the start. Uh, we only had one uh, fatality, you know, only one death. And it was, uh, it was a tourist. Mm -hmm. So this was sometime March. You know, so uh, that was it. So we were very fortunate, but really sad. One, one death is more than enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, not too many cases of Filipinos. Our concern was more on repatriation. Mm. And we were able to repatriate more than a thousand Filipinos mm. last year. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, in, in this just this month alone, mm -hmm. uh, it's terrible, you know. It, 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 two, it, three days ago, I, we had two cases, two deaths. Uh, Tuesday, I had only 20 reports of uh, COVID positive cases. As of today, I, I had to add 30 more. So now I have 50 okay. Filipinos with the uh, COVID cases. But put it in perspective, no, Christian. Mm -hmm. We only have registered 1,390 Filipinos mm -hmm. according to their immigration offices as mm -hmm. of June 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, my count is because people coming in and out, uh, I think there are about a maximum of 3,000 Filipinos here. Mm -hmm. The composition is 80% are housewives. Mm -hmm. And only 20% are, uh, maybe 10% are OFWs, the rest are teachers or uh, priests or students uh, like that. So we, you would have at the maximum maybe 70 to 100 or so-called not, oh, I don't want to, they're all OFWs, okay? But on a, on a managerial level or as professional. So in terms of restrictions, po, we know na before yung surge of COVID infections sa India, yung daily cases nila, 10,000 or 30,000 a day, but now there are around 300,000 daily as you mentioned nga po. What changed po in terms of restrictions there compared before na yung cases were not as high as it is now po? Uh, yeah, you can attribute that to at least two factors, biological uh, and behavioral. Last year, they would have 10,000 cases a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and the, the, the virus wasn't that uh, virulent, wasn't that potent or lethal. And uh, they had social gatherings, they had political gatherings, they had religious gatherings. So November, December, January, they had all these uh, uh, behavioral activities, which you could say could have caused a spike or an increase in COVID, but it didn't. It, it stayed at about the 10,000 average. Mm. And then all of a sudden, it's January, February, they even have uh, rallies and uh, the religious uh, gatherings and, and so forth and so on. And, and uh, there was no spike. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, March, April, boom. It went to 50,000, it went to 100,000, 200,000. Now it's 300,000 a day. Mm -hmm. So how do you, where do you attribute this? So scientists here, uh, uh, the people here are saying it must be biological. What do you mean by biological? It must be the kind of strain, mm -hmm. uh, the, the double mutant virus that we have right now. This variant that is hitting 
the Indians. As I said earlier, it's more lethal, it's more brutal, it's more dangerous. And uh, that is where they attribute it now, uh, why we have a super spike, a tsunami of cases coming in. Imagine a million cases every three days. Okay. So that's really bad. So it is, they claim, biological due to this double mutant strain that they have. Now, sir, dito naman sa mga vaccines, uh, we ordered millions of doses of Indian vaccines. Um, are there assurances po ba coming from India that the delivery of these vaccines would not face um, any delay considering yung situation po dyan? Well, uh, India is the vaccine uh, capital of the world. 60% of the vaccine, not just uh, for COVID, comes from India. One company particularly, Serum Institute. And uh, as a matter of fact, last year, they donated over 66 million doses to different countries, mostly to neighboring uh, countries here. They have enough vaccines. No? Uh, and the, the, the state, the government, provided additional funds for these uh, manufacturers to double their production mm -hmm. so that it would meet the requirements of the <laughs> Indian uh, citizenry. And they have rolled out as early as January. And they have uh, vaccinated more than 155 million people here. So having said that, the government, our government is negotiating with two different companies here to provide vaccines for the Philippines. One is called Vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, Bharat Biotech is the manufacturer, mm -hmm. and uh, they have an arrangement for 8 million uh, doses. But this is a tripartite deal. This is not with the government. Uh, this is with the private sector, uh, the Bodegosio of Joey Conception, the LGUs, and the manufacturer supplier. So 8 million doses, once they get the approval of the FDA, DOF, and the other regulatory agencies there, once they get the approval, they are committing to have it delivered to the Philippines by in one month's time. Mm. Okay, so if they get uh, it the uh, 1st of May, they can deliver it first week of June. Um, and this is a, a, a private sector-led uh, activity. Mm -hmm. And uh, the government of India has not imposed any any restriction. No? Mm -hmm. They have not prohibited the export of vaccines, mm -hmm. uh, which is good. They prohibited the export of remdesivir, but mm -hmm. not for vaccines. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they have to be very, very careful because the people are saying here that, uh, uh, why are you selling vaccines when we still need it here in India? Mm -hmm. In reality, they have enough. And then they have a three, I mean, thought, three pricing mechanism. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, you, if you go to the public hospitals, uh, you want to be vaccinated, it's very, very cheap. If you go to a private hospital, eh, there is a different cost. If you go to a state hospital, there's a different cost. Mm -hmm. If you export your vaccine, there's a different price. Mm -hmm. So uh, layered and costing, you yeah, know. Mm -hmm. So for export, it's it's a, it's the highest price, of course. So what they allow ex uh, uh, export of vaccines. The other one is Yung Serum Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, Secretary Calves was here last month and uh, if things push through, by September, you will have uh, uh, the, the Covavax, which is the brand name of uh, the vaccine uh, uh, I, uh, uh, developed by Novavax, the company in the U.S. The manufacturer will be Serum Institute of India. So aside from these, yung 30, tama po ba 30 million yung sa, sa Novavax ko? And then 8 million dun sa private sector. Are we eyeing more negotiations or deals when it, when it comes to vaccines, para mas madagdagan yung supply sa atin? Or ito po muna? Ito muna, uh, if things go well, uh, you know, I think a co-vaccine of Barat I was able to get EUA already. Mm -hmm. So if things go well and it is accepted well and there is still a demand uh, for uh, supply in the Philippines, they can negotiate uh, 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 with, with the manufacturer here for additional doses. Mm -hmm. So they're open mm -hmm. and they're, they're committed. <laughs> to provide the Philippines with uh, with vaccines. Speaking of vaccine, sirs, in a radio interview, in a recent radio interview, sabi niyo po nakapagpabakuna na kayo because India is offering yung um, vaccination for those 45 years old and above, regardless of nationality. Are Filipinos there already getting vaccinated? Ina-avail po ba nila tong opportunity na to? Um, yes. So, ilan na po? Apo. Definitely. Uh, as I said, regardless of uh, citizenship, so even other embassies here, mm -hmm. they jump. Mm -hmm. So the Filipinos also uh, can avail of that opportunity. My staff here have done it also. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Ilan na sir yung mga Pilipino na kapag-vaccinate na po dyan sa India? Uh, well, number one, unay natin, no? yung 45 and above. Uh-huh. Okay? And mm-hmm. then yung 18 okay. and above starting May 1. Mm. Okay po. Sir, I'm, I'm gonna shift away from the pandemic po muna um, since I have you here na po. I just want to get, um, this is about the relationship naman of the Philippines and India. Um, an overview of recent developments um, on the ties between these two countries. Ano po yung, what would you consider yung most prominent area of concern? Like defense po ba? Trade, labor? Can you, give, can you tell us more about that po? Well, uh, let's, I'd like to focus on, on uh, economic opportunities and business opportunities. No? Because I'd like to establish the Philippines as the regional headquarters of Indian companies in the fields of uh, the pharmaceutical industry and for IT. Uh, pharmaceutical industry because it's so well developed here mm-hmm. and medicines are so cheap uh, and they, they have a good uh, research and development facility and programs. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's really you know an eye-opener, Christian, if you come here and you, you buy medicines for your parents and you find out it's 70% cheaper here in India. Mm-hmm. So we want the pharma companies uh, to establish the regional headquarters for ASEAN in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Secondly, IT. Mm-hmm. You go to the call centers right now. These are mostly, if not all, Indian owned. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, they, they're hiring more than 100,000 Filipinos combined. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so, we want the Philippines also to have, to be their regional headquarters for uh, the IT industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a hand in glove, you know. It's a, it's a perfect fit. We speak English, we have a very young generation. Uh, very innovative, uh, very intelligent. So <laughs> it's the best uh, an ideal spot for them to put up uh, the regional headquarters in the Philippines for the IT industry. So at least those two. And then in the field of education, they're providing us scholarships. Mm-hmm. So master's, doctorate for free. So the problem is mga bata, Western mentality. We want to go to the States. We want to go to Europe. We don't want to look you know, towards our neighbors. So your generation, uh, review well, you know, uh, uh, act east, look at our neighbors, because they, this your century is going to be the Asian century. Mm-hmm. So on those two things, and then other employment opportunities, uh, there will be a lot uh, in terms of agriculture, exchanges, uh, our coconut industry, their bamboo industry, uh, fisheries, um, uh, we, we, we import from them uh, all the beef, uh, kara beef that you, you eat, mm-hmm. uh, milk, uh, and so forth and so on. And we can uh, uh, take advantage of the advanced technologies that they have. Mm-hmm. So we're working on that. Now we, we, we signed the uh, air services agreement, cultural exchange programs, uh, IT uh, programs. Uh, we had about four or five agreements already signed and we hope to to convert it into action. So very promising. We, we, we hope to have a preferential trade agreement with them in the next two years uh, that will open up uh, business and uh, industry to, uh, to for the Indian companies to establish a strong presence in the Philippines. So we're very optimistic about that. Okay, sir. Um, this is going to be my last question to end. Ano po yung message or reminder niyo po sa mga Filipino dyan? Um, what can they ask? expect from the embassy in terms of assistance, especially pandemic-related um, assistance from the embassy? Well, uh, we already have a, 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 a message in our, in our Facebook, no? that uh, well, very, very most important is access. Mm-hmm. So we're telling the Filipino community here, you have access to the Philippine embassy. Go to our Facebook, email us, may chat group kami, together with the Filipino community, uh, uh, helping us out. We have established a chat group, the COVID support, uh, COVID support group. And uh, whatever we can do to help, uh, we will and we can. Uh, this is upon instructions of Secretary Luxin and President Duterte to help our Kababayans here. So once we establish the communication lines, they get in touch with us, then now we can go on a case to case basis. What kind of support do you need? Medical uh, assistance? Uh, uh, maybe after the travel ban is lifted, the repatriation, mm-hmm. uh, considering the restrictions for us to travel, how can we support you for your other needs? So 
So the lines are open. That's the most important thing. And they can get in touch with us. And lastly, of course, you see now in social media, pray for India, say India. That will really help us a lot also. All right, sir. Thank you for joining us today. That was Philippine Ambassador to India Ramon Bagat Singh Jr. And this has been Inside Look.